Welcome back to the channel, guys. Well, you see, you got the golf cart in here now. Um, it's uh, almost summertime, so uh, we got to get it ready for summer for camping, and uh, we got to do some maintenance on it. Uh, pulled it out of the the toy hauler a couple weeks ago, and I got some things I need to do to it. But I want to give you a little uh, little history of it. As you can see, it's uh, an '85 uh, Yamaha G2 gas powered golf cart. I bought it in uh, 2016 for 450 bucks. Obviously it didn't look like this. It was a stock looking golf cart with the golf rack and everything in the back. It did not run. So uh, that's the reason it was so cheap. I brought it home within a half an hour. I had it running. So it was a good deal. Uh, problem was uh, ended up uh, push rod. Somebody tried to adjust the valves on these and they have an adjustable uh, drive tra uh, valve train in it and the, the, the actual uh, push rod popped out <laughs> so obviously it didn't start but yeah we had it running I ended up rebuilding the motor because um, it had a lot of hours you could tell it smoked but I put a new rod piston and rings in it cleaned up the head nothing crazy guys not on this yet but uh, Obviously, uh, we, we bought it for camping. We go camping and we like to ride around the, uh, you know, the different campgrounds. Of course, we can't just have a plain golf cart, as you can see. So uh, once I got the motor running pretty good, I uh, ended up uh, putting on a, a Jake's 5-inch uh, lift kit on it. Uh, bought some bigger tires and wheels, of course. Um, done a couple little things. The frame was rusted, so we had to do some frame repair. Um, just couldn't live with it because uh, it looked like a golf cart. So what I end up doing is uh, go ahead and buying some inch and a half DOM tubing and building the roll cage as you can see. Uh, we, I built the cage with the back so that we could have a back seat. Um, made the custom back seat mounts. Reupholstered the front seats. Made custom front bumpers. It's got custom headlight buckets in it now. It's uh, got LED lights in it. Got tail lights. Uh, ended up retrofitting a, a, a golf cart Lexan uh, glass onto the roll cage. Um, of course, we gotta we gotta have a rear view mirror here, uh, custom mounted, and put a uh, a Boss 26 inch uh, Bluetooth sound bar in it so that we can have some music while we're out on the, the road. All right, so here we got some goodies in. Like I said, we were gonna do some maintenance on the golf cart, um, and uh, we're gonna do a little more than just maintenance. So uh, we're gonna change the oil. So we got some uh, 10W30 here, but as you can see, we got a new primary clutch. So, um, purchased a uh, Golf Cart King aftermarket clutch. Uh, the factory clutch is in that cart. It's 1985. It did have uh, one of the broken weights in there. And it rattled and just was old. So we're going we're gonna to switch out the clutch. I'm going to show you how that's done. And we ended up getting uh, some wiring uh, parts here. So uh, as you can see on the card, it's got aftermarket headlights, tail lights. It's got a, a you know sound bar inside. We have some LED lights that are running underneath of some uh, underglow lights. Uh, all the wiring was always just so uh, kind of slapped together at the last minute because it was something that we were trying to go camping. But I got a little uh, four four position. Uh, little fuse holder here I got a nice ground bar put all my grounds to got a waterproof uh, relay so uh, a fuse holder this is all from um, CE Automotive um, great stuff we did a lot on the Mustang with their stuff I like their products they're fast um, good price but uh, yeah, I'm going to try to clean up the wiring on this thing so when you turn the key on, everything uh, is either on or off. Uh, too much uh, stuff was just wired right to the battery, of course, for quick, easy uh, to get it going, but uh, that's not really the right way. 
So we're going to end up making a bracket to mount these on there, mount the uh, relay and stuff, and we'll show you how it goes. So here's the engine. And again, as you can hear, it's raining on the metal roof. So excuse the raindrops and the, and the pitter patter. But as you can see, it's gas powered, a little dusty. But uh, here's the battery. Um, and here's all our wiring that's just slapped together real fast because we, uh, like I said earlier, we were just trying to get things going to go down to the beach or wherever we were going camping. So here's the primary, uh, original primary clutch. We're gonna, that's what we're going to replace out. I've already replaced the secondary clutch with a, a stiffer spring. Uh, some of you guys in the golf carts world know you need a stiffer spring. You're running these bigger tires. So uh, let me get going. We'll, you know, we'll take the battery out, take the air box out. We'll get down to, so we can get down to this uh, clutch right here. Okay, we got the battery out, we got the air box out, so we can see here, here's the clutch. So uh, we need to get rid of the uh, starter, this is a starter generator for some of you who don't know, this, uh, this belt spins the motor over when you press the gas down and it's basically a belt starter. But uh, there's a bolt down here, we need to, we need to loosen this bolt up. And then the bolt down here, and then we can uh, we'll slide back on a pivot, almost like an alternator. This is actually probably like an old uh, starter generator off of some of uh, the old tractors Cub Cadets had them. But um, let's uh, get that loosened up, and we'll get that that off. We can get this belt off, and then we'll take this cover off. We'll be able to pull this belt off, and uh, we're almost home free uh, as long as the clutch comes out of there easily. As you can see, the butt belt's already loosened up some. Get a pry bar, and we can pry this over. As you can see, got the belt off. I'm just checking the clutch. <laughs> As you can see, it's got a lot of play. So, it's old, you know. Uh, it's time to replace. So, let's get to it. clutch we'll get the, we need to remove this bolt right here this goes in the end of the crank and uh, pull that bolt out and then uh, there's a special tool which I do have this special tool because I've had this clutch off when I rebuilt the motor originally so uh, you'll see it's uh, basically a, a puller that'll help press this uh, clutch off of the crankshaft. Well, I gotta get rid of, uh, take out this bolt right here in the end of the crankshaft for, to get rid of the, uh, get this clutch off. I just ran into a snag. So this golf cart, golf cart has a lift kit on it. And uh, what it does is it lowers the engine down because the engine is actually hooked to like a swing arm. All right, so here's here's the frame rail, the factory frame rail of the golf cart. This is actually a swing arm. It pivots right here. So the engine pivots. Well, when you lift, obviously, jack these golf carts up, it lowers the swing arm down and, in essence, lowers the motor. So now I can't get a uh, impact in there. 
I'm going to try to use a swivel. May may not work. <laughs> may destroy the swivel on the impact, but I'm going to try it. If not, it's going to suck, but I'm going to have to take uh, basically uh, the spring coil overs in the back. That's what is on these things. They're basically shocks and springs. Is uh, take them off so I can get the motor to come back up the factory position and have access to this pole. So, uh, like I was saying, I want to change the uh, electronic or the electrical inside this golf cart. We had, um, you know, temporary had everything hooked up to the battery. Just looks hideous and uh, some of the stuff con had constant power because it was directly to the battery. So, I'm going to make this, uh, this little panel here um, that's going to include a uh, four position fuse holder here. Um, I got a main system uh, 40 amp fuse and I have a uh, 40 amp um, relay right here which will be hooked to the um, key switch so when I turn the key switch on it will power up um, this little fuse panel right here and of course uh, all the different things that I have uh, on the cart so um, this I'm going to make a dedicated ground strip land all the grounds so I'm going to run a main ground to the bottom here and um, I'm going to end up taking the uh, this main 40 amp fuse here this wire and running it to uh, to the battery so that'll give us a nice controlled uh, electrical system in this thing now uh, without having to worry about am I draining the battery because something that has constant power like the sound bar or if somebody leaves uh, the lights on or whatever so uh, kind of act like uh, regular automotive uh, yeah it's a little elaborate but um, I think it'll work out good again CE Auto Electric is where I picked up all this at um, great prices and good quality stuff so let's uh, let's get making this panel and get it mounted inside the cart and see how it looks <laughs> Okay, as you can see, I gotta put a little splice here. Thought I had enough of this uh, three-quarter inch tube, uh, square tubing, to make a little uh, make the bracket mount, but I didn't have enough. I only had a couple scrap pieces, and um, so I'm gonna end up splicing this together. So as you can see, I got the uh, edges beveled. A little gap there so I can get some good penetration and I'll grind that off and we'll make it uh, make it look like it was never there so uh, if you're trying to do something like this just make sure you get those edges beveled uh, fill that with weld go back with a blending or a flapper wheel and grind it off and it'll look like uh, it was never there so let's see if I can I can do that and see if we can see that scene
Okay, well, there she is. As you can see, let me see if I can zoom in. Yeah, can't even tell where the seam is at. So, that's how you do it. If you need to extend a piece of tube or a piece of pipe or something, just make sure you bevel the ends so you can get good penetration and then you can grind it off and still have a little weld left in there. Okay, uh, same thing as we did when you saw me do that little splice, but here's the uh, biter corners. Um, of course, I want to grind them smooth because that's I'm going <coughs> to mount the aluminum panel on here. But uh, again, bevel, bevel your edges. Get some, get good penetration in there, and then you can grind it off. Let's see how it goes. I got the mount at a three-quarter tube. You can see we got a ground down. You don't have to worry about that inside corner. Um, get the light there. You don't have to worry about that. You can just leave that. You could take a die grinder, but that's not worth all that. But as you can see, all the corners are nice and flush. So then the panel mounts on there. So let's get this thing uh, welded onto the cough cart and uh, let's, let's get some wiring done. Okay, so we've got the bracket, uh, got the bracket mounted. As you can see, I drilled some, some holes in here for the uh, mounting plate. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a, uh, a rivet nut in there. If uh, any of you uh, watch some of the other videos, we've used them before, but uh, it's nice. Um, I'll go in that hole right there and it'll give you threads you know into a blind area of course being a blind tube that'll give us these are a 1024 um, I have uh, the tool for this it's a big giant uh, rivet gun looking uh, contraption but you can put these in with just using a bolt and two nuts um, so no worries if you if you don't want to buy the tool it's a very expensive these can be put in with just uh, a, like I said a bolt of the size that uh, the rivet nut is and, and two nuts and you'll be able to uh, draw that up and um, basically compress it just like a rivet and then you'll have threads here's the fancy tool again looks like a, a giant rivet gun has two handles on it for leverage because you can get uh, large size. These are 1024, so. mounted I just welded it to the uh, the side post on each G2 have a steel side post so uh, I got it welded in there put some paint on it sorry for the noise you can hear the rain on the uh, roof again should be a always raining garage I think it just seems like every time we're out here filming it's raining so that's what it looks like, the bracket in there. Let's see what it looks like with the panel. Here's uh, the panel installed. I gotta get some new hardware. I didn't have enough of uh, some nice stainless uh, button heads, so I had to throw some, some junk stuff in. But uh, I'll hit Home Depot or Tractor Supply, pick up some stainless uh, socket head cap, button head screws, or something that looks nice. But there it is. Um, I'm going to start wiring everything in and uh, see how this thing uh, turns out. I've got it all wired up. So you can see we got the uh, four position fuse panel and we're using three of the fuses in there currently. Got a nice uh, cover on it. I got the uh, I got a 40 amp 
um, fuse right here, fuse holder. We got a 40 amp uh, relay, and it is a waterproof style, so that's nice. I got the uh, ground bar right here, so I have all my grounds now going to it. So, uh, yeah, it works out pretty good. I'll turn the key on. Relay clicked on. Now we have power. And uh, sound bar has power to it. Headlights work. underneath work. So I can turn it all on. All power is on. Headlights are on. And if I turn the switch off, out pretty good no more accidentally leaving something on and draining the battery but uh, yeah that's it so we're gonna give uh, give the cart I gotta change the oil in it I'm gonna clean up the engine a little bit a little dusty from uh, running around in the in the dirt but uh, I'm gonna give it a test drive check out the new clutch we're gonna see how the new clutch sounds sounds uh, see if it sounds better than the old uh, Yamaha clutch so uh, let's take it for a test ride and see what it does. Make sure you guys go down, hit that like and subscribe button, and we'll see you guys in the next one.